everyone. My name's Charlotte and I'm the co-founder of Parkinson's Concierge. Hi, I'm Russ and I'm another co-founder of Parkinson's Concierge. Thanks very much for those of you who are joining us this evening. Um, we hope you're not getting too tiresome of our faces appearing twice a day, every day for a week on Facebook Live. Um, just we've got so much to tell you, so much to share with you and positivity to spread from people that we connect with business-wise that are offering solutions to help us with all our symptoms. So first up, I would like to um, talk about a company, a registered charity called Parkinson's Equip. Now Parkinson's Equip is quite a different charity. They were established in 2013 and the three trustees um, all oversee and take some part in the various activities required to run the organisation and to make grants appropriately. Um, they issue grants to help people with their quality of life, improving quality of life. And they are a registered, registered charity, as I said, and their main goal is to support people with Parkinson's who wish to improve their quality of life through the involvement in sport or creative arts activities. Now, just thinking about that, Russ, there's a, there's a couple of people that are doing sporting activities for people with Parkinson's that we can maybe refer on to Parkinson's Equip for possible grants. Absolutely. Um, there's a lot of interest in art, creative arts and involvement in sports. And ping pong. Ping pong, yeah. And a lot of people taking part in the activities so it's a good charity to look out for it's all about quality of life in, in the here and now so. yeah they actually achieve it by um the the work they do by grant making to an individual by funding organizations already involved in working with people with parkinson's um to help them maintain and improve the service they already provide their secondary aim is to contribute to awareness raising in particular issues around young onset Parkinson's. Young onset Parkinson's, do you want to talk a bit about that Russ? Yeah, young onset Parkinson's has, um, certainly in my opinion, a greater, a greater factor in being diagnosed um, at, at a younger age. There's a lot more things to consider you, you might have a mortgage, you might have a young family. Traditionally, the Parkinson's affects older people, which is false. It affects younger people as well. At working age, they're classed as YOPD. Yeah, uh, I think some people who help us in the medical industry and other people who could provide services for YOPD, like Russ says, it's a totally different ball game. Being diagnosed at a younger age with all the responsibilities that go along with it, such as a mortgage, um, cars, all sorts of things that you might have commitments that all of a sudden you're not able to carry on working and pay. And pay. So yeah, um, just to create awareness of that. Good at creating awareness, and um, that's very much what Charlotte and I do here at Parkinson's Concierge. Uh, we create awareness not only to the community, but more so to the people who know nothing about us, uh, areas outside of the community. The community has some very, very active advocates and ambassadors doing wonderful jobs and creating awareness. Um, Charlotte and I took a different route and we're trying to create awareness outside of the community to the people who know nothing about the condition. Right, next up, um, Russ is going to talk about Stable Spoon. Yeah, there's a gentleman called Hamal Dinas, who's the founder and director. Hamal is a mechanical engineering student at the University of Warwick. He decided to create his own affordable solution for Ben as part of his third year project. Um, having received ethical approval to interview people with tremors, he made these early prototypes. Now, you're not going to see them, 
but I, I strongly suggest that you click onto their website and the details of which will follow with the video with the video after we've finished here um ben was a family friend who he's had inspiration wasn't he he was indeed mm -hmm. yeah with a severe hand tremor he struggled a lot with eating and couldn't afford existing solutions that are on the market costing upwards of 150 pound um ben is not alone there's up to four percent of the world population having tremors um we also know other people who struggle to eat when they're mm -hmm. disconnected um at stable spoon as well they're gonna make the gadget available to a lot more people at a much cheaper price aren't they absolutely they're just looking at prototypes at the moment um they're very excited to have made a further prototype and this is your opportunity to get onto their website again i mentioned the details will follow after this once you're on the the website there's an opportunity for you to become a user tester so if you're interested in participating in the testing of his new device um there's a section that you can click on his website and i'm sure that he'll be delighted to hear from you excellent we like hearing about gadgets and and sort of things that can improve quality of life whether it's a gadget or whether it's an app you know we're always calling out to try things out we can get people in the community to get together and volunteer to um take part no problem at all um so absolutely the, the good thing about apps or gadgets as well to make our life easier is that it's it's here and now while we live with the condition and most of the time it's a non-medicinal route to solving a problem instead of taking yet more tablets right um next up we're going to talk about one of our charity favorites absolutely the, the um, cure parkinson's trust or cure parkinson's, parkinson's as, as they're known. now known um they were set up in 2005 by four people all living with parkinson's they were frustrated with the lack of progress in research and treatments. So Tom Isaac, who sadly passed away a couple of um, years ago, Sir Richard Nichols and Michael Dickin and Sir David Jones set out to find nothing more than a cure. Um, focusing on research projects with the potential to slow, stop or reverse the progression of Parkinson's that's one big task, isn't it? Absolutely. In 15 years, the charity they started has made significant progress in a quest for a cure. They funded millions of pounds of research, made scientific discoveries and opened new ventures and avenues of research. So really, we have the Cure Parkinson's Trust focusing solely on a cure. We have Parkinson's UK researching and finding a cure um also involved with improving quality of life and the epda yeah that's uh, the umbrella body for a lot of charities based in the europe zone and this is why the main reason russ and i set up parkinson's concierge as a for-profit organization because there's charities already out there that are doing fa fantastic work you may not have heard of Parkinson's Equip, who we mentioned earlier. They're a UK-based charity there to help you putting grants in place. There's loads of charities doing loads of work, and we didn't want to duplicate what they are doing. And that's why we set up Parkinson's Concierge to support all the charities and get the word out there, what people are doing and you know how people need help with the condition as well. Another charity, which is our charity of the month, is the World Parkinson's Coalition, who are campaigning at the moment and adver advertising quite heavily for next year's uh, World Parkinson's Congress event. Now, the Congress is taking place between the 7th and 10th of June, and that's 2022. And one of the things that they have is a grant scheme to try and get people with a condition 
to the to the Congress who normally wouldn't be able to afford to do so. So again, in the comments after we finish this stream, there will be details of the World Parkinson's Congress, World Parkinson's Coalition, um, and the route to making any donations to help people with the condition get out to the Congress. I think that's all from us on our three three um, partners that we're collaborating with. Um, as we said, they're all delivering messages of hope to you, which we will post up now. So watch out for the next three videos coming to you now. Um, and then we'll be back again tomorrow as usual at 11 o'clock and 6 o'clock in the evening um, to introduce you to some more people who can help you improve your quality of life with Parkinson's. Absolutely. So we'll see you again tomorrow and stay safe. Bye.